Hey, what's up? Welcome to the program. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Neil deGrasse Tyson's here, astrophysicist DJ. extraordinaire. What's up, hey, man? Hey, guys. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Big day for you. Got the master class master here. Master class is out. It feels like it's a culmination of a, a lifetime in this field for you. It really is. I hadn't thought about it that way, but now that you say it, it is. But it's a little weird that I'm standing right here. With your picture like right there? <laughs> <laughs> Just hanging out. Yeah, why don't you mirror that shot right there? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's the... You know, what is wisdom if it's not just the, the essence, the digested essence of all that you've experienced, learned and experienced? Mm -hmm. And this master class is a, it's really wisdom that I have gleaned, not only in what it is to think like a scientist, but also to communicate with something that might be complex or difficult, or to communicate with people that might be ossified in their views. And there's a whole section in this class about how to uh, see if you, what kind of bias you might carry in your thinking. I think we all have a little bias. We, we all do, and so, yeah. so and you expect that, we're human. Mm -hmm. So the real challenge is, are you self-aware of the bias? Mm. Some people are definitely not. They're definitely <laughs> not, they, they think they got the answer right down, you know, center line uh, down the street. So this class is, a, is an exploration of all the ways, all the wiring that you'd find in the brain of a scientist. Um, and also for me, what methods, tools, and tactics I have accumulated over the decades, really. Mm -hmm. I guess I am that old. <laughs> over the decades to try to communicate uh, in ways, by the way, communicate with different kinds of people in different settings, different mm -hmm. ages, different backgrounds. And uh, you know, one of the highest compliments I can get is when I'm on a show, or if it's a documentary or some TV uh, news show or, or interview, and someone afterwards would say, oh, you're a natural there. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> they think it's natural. Mm. It, there's a lot <laughs> so, more work that goes into it. Oh, it. there's so much work mm. that goes in that makes it look natural. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's what this is about and why. And the time had come, I think. That, you know, there's no end of videos of me out there. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of stuff talking, out there. Yeah. And it's most of it, but, the master class is really what's under the hood. Hmm. So when you look under the hood, like going all the way back to the beginning, I mean, you're somebody that's always questioning stuff. So where does that all begin? What does it look like for you as a kid? Oh, well, I, you know, age nine was a first visit to the, my local planetarium. Right, that's when you kind of fell in love with the whole thing. Right? Yeah. In fact, I, I don't think I had much uh, say in the matter. It was... It just happened. It was going to be a thing regardless. The universe chose me. Hmm. That's how I think about it. And the... Uh, and then by age 11, I, I had an answer for that annoying question that adults always ask children. What are you going to do when you grow up? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So by age 11, I said, I'm going to be an astrophysicist. And that pretty much shut him up. I mean, I mean, people must have been pretty it was flabbergasted. A little, a little weird, that. a little weird. And, you know, plus no one knew anybody who you, oh, Aunt Matilda is that. Right. No, no, <laughs> no, nobody knew an aunt and uncle. There was no, you know, if you wanted to become a lawyer, a doctor, mm -hmm. Indian chief, you know, whatever was the list of, sure. of the day. There was some, you knew somebody who you could talk to about it. So, but it, it's been that long. And I've been thinking about communicating it since I was just turned 15. It was the first public talk I ever gave when I was just turned 15. It was to adults at City College. What do you and remember I, about that? Oh, everything. <laughs> what, do you, what, do I, what kind of question is that? <laughs> I mean, listen, some, do you pe remember? some people don't remember it at all, uh, but you're the type of guy that remembers it. Well, you remember, more. plus they, they paid me to give the talk. That was kind of weird. So how'd you get to be 15 and get paid for a talk? Well, because I knew I'd already been, I'm already six years in mm -hmm. on my life's interest. So I had a telescope. I already knew all about black holes, the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. There was a comet headed around Earth. At that time. Uh, yeah. In a few months hence, at that time. What would, would have been a famous comet, but it turned out to be a dud mm. uh, for, for reasons that were interesting. It's interesting why it turned out to be a dud. Why but, was it a dud? Well, well, let me back up. It was thought to be, it's going to be like one of the brightest comets ever. Mm. And it was coming around just around Christmas time. Mm. Good Christmas, timing. Christmas yep. comet. It had all the marketing ready for it. And the reason why we thought it, we, the people mm -hmm. who discovered it and people who analyzed it, thought it would be one of the brightest comets ever because it was discovered farther away in the solar system than any other comet had ever been discovered. Mm. So if it's that bright, that far away, by the time it gets close, it would be even brighter. That was the expectation. And what we learned in that apparition was that it was 
the comet didn't have much experience coming around the sun, and so it was very tightly packed. And the normal heat that would jostle free gases and particles and this sort of thing, um, it was ineffective or less effective at accomplishing this than it would be if the comet had more tenure mm. um, in its journeys around the sun. But anyhow, I had, I had some expertise in that, and word, somebody told somebody, and there was a class where they wanted to learn about it, and I was invited to talk to the class. Wow. And then they invited me back, so I did it twice. Then they gave me a $50 check. It was like, whoa. That must have been big at that, that, that point. That was like more. infinite. It was, first, it was <laughs> like, a I made it. It was, it was a zillion years ago, first <laughs> of all. So that, you get that, you know, just figure that out. Just reverse value $50. This is from the early 70s, because that's how old I am. Mm. And uh, plus I'm 15, you know, so that's basically an infinite amount of money. I felt, actually, I felt uncomfortable about it. Why? Because I was just, uh, thank you for asking, uh, I was just talking about what I knew. It's like me asking you to describe what you're wearing today. But describe just, describe just your favorite chair. You. Right. Describe your living room. Describe directions to your home. Here's fifty dollars. Well, you'd put that, in the that's time. what I felt it was. Yeah. That, 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 and so, I just it, it felt wrong to me hmm. at the time. Does I, it feel right now? I, I didn't give back the money. I'm just saying it felt, <laughs> it still felt wrong. You got past that point. When, so when did it start to feel right then? It still doesn't. No. I, yeah. It's I it's still nothing feels right. I mean, I wake up and I. You know, I have nearly 14 million Twitter followers. That doesn't feel right. Mm. Like, do they know I'm an astrophysicist? There's still time to unfollow. You know, <laughs> can can you do that? Uh, I don't. I have to keep reminding myself that there is an appetite out there. Mm. 